Good morning children. I am Ms. Shonali Banerjee and I will be taking your biology lessons in this session. In this crisis situation, let us not waste any time and start with our biology lessons of class 6 through these learning videos. Children, in class 5 you had a subject called science, but in class 6 this subject science has been divided into three subdivisions physics, chemistry and biology. Before starting the biology lessons, let us first understand what do you mean by this term biology. The biology term means study of living organisms which includes plants as well as animals. Biology term has been derived from two Greek words bios b i o s and logos l o g o s the term bios means life and logos means study these two terms bios and logos together form the word biology which means study of life or living organisms. Children, you should also know that who is the father of biology or who is considered as the father of biology. He is Aristotle. A R I S T O T L E. Aristotle was the first person who studied plants and animals in a detailed manner. Let us now start with the lesson cell, chapter 3 in your biology books. We all know that all living organisms are made up of tiny units called cell. But what is this cell? What does it consist of? How it is made up of? To be very specific, a cell can be defined as the smallest structural and functional unit of life. Now what does this structural and functional unit mean? Structural means you know that our body's structure and form is formed by these cells, hence structural. Why functional? Because all the life processes in our body as you know respiration breathing digestion etc all these processes are performed by these cells and hence functional unit cell was discovered by an english scientist robert hooke in 1665 robert hooke constructed a microscope by himself. The diagram of the microscope is given in the chapter. This microscope which he constructed was used by him to observe a thin slice of cork. When he was observing this thin slice of cork under the microscope, he saw tiny box-like structures or compartments which appeared like a honeycomb. He named these structures or boxes as cells. Cell is derived from a Latin word and means room or little room. Further researches by different scientists like M. Skaliden, Rudolf Virchow and Theodor Schoen led to the formation of cell theory. What is cell theory? Cell theory are different characteristic points given about the cell. These points include the first one, all living things are composed of cells, which means that every living plant as well as animal which we see around us are made up of tiny units called cells. The second point of cell theory is 
The cell is the structural and functional unit of all living things. We studied it earlier which means that our body is composed of cells. The form of our body is given by cells and all the functions performed by our body as well as other living organisms is done by the tiny units that is cells. The third point which is a very important point is that all cells come from the division of pre-existing cells which means that when a particular cell divides it leads to the production of new cells unless and until a pre-existing or previously present cell is there there will not be division or formation of any other cells. We just now discussed the three points of cell theory. The third point of the cell theory is also given in the form of a Latin sentence which is omnis cellula e cellula that is all cells come from the division of pre-existing cells. It is a very important point as in the examination the Latin sentence might be given and you have to explain the same. Robert Hooke discovered a microscope but that microscope was unable to see all the parts of the cell. Hence, in 1930s, Knoll and Ruska discovered a electron microscope. This electron microscope was able to magnify the image of a cell half a million times. That is, a small pin head which you see can be magnified as big as 10 football grounds. So, you can imagine how much big a cell would, would appear to be. Living organisms can be classified into two types based on the number of cells present. They are unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms are those in which the body is composed of only one cell like amoeba. Amoeba has a single cell in the body. The other subdivision is multicellular organisms which have more than one cell in their body like all the plants and animals which we see around us. Let us now discuss about the shapes and sizes of different types of cells. Cells are mostly microscopic that is they can be only seen under a microscope. The cells are measured in microns or micrometer. One micrometer is equal to 0.001 mm that is millimeter. This is given in your book. The smallest cell in human body are the RBCs. The largest cell is the ostrich egg and the longest cell is the nerve cell. The cells vary in their shapes and sizes according to the functions which they perform. Like amoeba and WBCs can alter their shape according to their own will. They don't remain at a constant shape or size. But plant cell and some other cells like nerve cell and RBCs that is red blood cells, they have a constant and definite shape. They don't change their shapes. Cells may be spherical, oval, rectangular, spindle shaped or cylindrical and it all depends upon the function they are performing. Let us now discuss some of the important cells and their functions. First and foremost we will take up WBC. I hope 
you all know about wbcs wbcs are the white blood cells these white blood cells are present in our blood stream and they perform an important function of fighting with all the germs which enter our body you will be very interested to know about a very important feature of these cells these cells can squeeze out of the blood capillaries and hence fight with the invading germs this is a very important quality of white blood cells the diagram of white blood cells is given in your book very clearly the next cell which we will discuss are the ciliated cells these ciliated cells are present in the lining of the nose and windpipe these are ciliated ciliated means they have a cilia you can see the cilia in the diagram which is given in the book what is the function of this cilia this cilia do not let any dust particles to enter the lungs as they are present in the nose and the windpipe and hence their continuous flickering movement doesn't doesn't let the dust particles to enter the lungs nerve cells nerve cells are long and elongated cells they are present in the brain as you all know some other cells are fat cells fat cells you know they naturally store fat and they are present just under our skin and they provide insulation to our body children here are some notes in context to the lessons which we just had these notes will help you in understanding the lesson in a much better manner first you see i have written the word biology and i have also written the two latin words bios that is life and logos that is study what is biology the study of living organisms i also discussed about the father of biology which is aristotle cell definition of cell the structural and functional unit of life who was the discoverer of cell robert hooke what he saw under the microscope which he constructed the cells appeared like a honeycomb and the structure i have drawn you can understand how a honeycomb looks like then comes the cell theory the cell theory was formulated by three scientists m scaliden theodor schwann and rudolf virchow children please learn the name of the scientist very minutely because the spellings are a bit tough and you have to memorize them please break the spellings word by word and then learn them we come to the next part of the notes that is i told you about omnis cellula e cellula which is a latin sentence which means all cell come from the division of pre existing cells electron microscope was discovered by nol and ruska in 1932 we also discuss the cell size which is measured in micron or micrometer and 1 micrometer is equal to 0.001 mm let us discuss some important questions now we discussed the largest cell which is the ostrich egg longest cell is the nerve cell cell which can come out of the blood vessels is white blood cell cell present in the lining of the nose and windpipe are the ciliated cells we also discussed about the unicellular and multicellular organisms i have written the difference here and you have to memorize unicellular organisms are made up of only one cell that is the example i have also written there is amoeba and the diagram is roughly drawn which is also given in your book 
multicellular organisms are made up of many cells example are plants and animals children go through the notes and memorize the questions which i have given here children you can see here i have written some tough spellings which we underwent when we were discussing the lesson biology becomes very easier when we learn the correct spellings and the correct way of learning the spellings is to break them and then learn them it becomes very easier see the first term which i have written is the father of biology that is aristotle aris a r i s t o t o t e l t e l e t e l aris total next is m sclyden sc s c h l i l e i d e n den next is theodore schon t h e o t h e o d o r d o r schon s c h o w o n w a w n Next is Rudolf Virchow, R U R U D O L F Dolph Virchow, V I R C H O W Virchow. Next is Amoeba, a unicellular organism which we discussed. A M O E B A, A M O E M O E B A B A M O E B A. multicellular means many celled having many cells in the body multi as you all know m u l t i multi cellu c e l l u l a r unicellular u n i uni c e l l u cellu l a r which are the organisms having single cell in their body children here are some other questions which are generally asked in the examinations let us discuss them along with the answers the first question is define cell so what is a cell a cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of life coming to the next question name the scientist who discovered cell it is robert hook third question what do you mean by the latin sentence omnes cellula e cellula the answer is all cells come from the division of pre existing cells the fourth question who designed the first electron microscope nol and raska in 1932 fifth question which cell can change their shape according to their function that is the white blood cells other examples are also there you can also write amoeba question number 6 state the points of cell theory so all the three points you have to write that is all living things are composed of cells the next point is the cell is the structural and functional unit of living things next all cells come from the division of pre existing cells what do you mean by pre existing cells which are already present next question smallest cell in the human body are the red blood cells some other questions which we also uh, discussed in the previous lessons should also be memorized by you all okay thank you